All right, let's discuss the Van- Vancouver, Los Angeles Kings versus the uh, Edmonton Oilers. We're, uh, by the way, this photo cracks me up because it, you see, look at look at Blake Lazar on the Kings. It looks like he's like, I just accept my faith, faith, face. I accept my fate. He goes, <laughs> crack me up, dude. So, but anyways, let's talk about let's talk about the Oilers. Let's talk about the um, uh, Edmonton Oilers as well as the LA Kings. Um, let's go with the Kings. It's a little bit easier. Uh, not, a little bit more difficult because as I, I want I want people to think that I'm not being um, not that I'm being biased but I'm like, that I'm like hey like this is a good team as well so uh, I guess any hint of where I'm, of where I'm going with my prediction so we're picking the prediction of who's going to win in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year in round one so we have Adrian Kempe put up 70 points in 77 games Fiala doing very well 73 and 82 what a good trade for them by the way Brock Faber is working out so well out in Minnesota so. I mean, but Fiala is also producing as well, so it's not there's not much of a complaint there. So, seventy points in eighty game, eighty one game for Kopitar. I mean, it starts to drive off with Trevor Moore, Byfield coming out party fifty five points in eighty games with twenty goals, awesome. Dowdy also still producing at his older age. The no, the shutdown third third center, um, playing well as well. Even uh, Jordan Spence, who is a third, he's playing as a, a younger player, twenty four points in seventy one games on a third pair. Um, so you're seeing production throughout this, a lot of these guys. So, and so they end up finished in third in the Pacific Division, 44, 27, and 11. And one of the bigger assets for the LA Kings, who have had up and down seasons, they were looking dynamic. Then they they fell into a wild card spot, and they they took it back because Vegas started to fall off. Um, one of the things that I was honestly surprised at when I was doing this review and looking at this is the goaltending. I honestly don't believe in <laughs> Talbot and Riddick as a tandem. But it's working, and uh, Phoenix Copley was supposed to be their guy, but he ended up getting injured earlier in the season was, and is now out for the season and will not be coming back for the playoffs. So, And he was out for a long time, too. So you're seeing that Talbot has taken over at a .913. I was like, holy smokes, he's playing phenomenally well. Why aren't they doing better, right? Uh, and Riddick, as well, has 24 games, .921. Like, so to me, the biggest issue with the LA Kings is scoring. And, and you can kind of see that with their skating. Goaltenders are playing phenomenal. 2.5 goals against the average. 2.16 for Dave Riddich. Like D- Dave, big save Riddich. Like these are older goalies. And so no, I'm surprised. I don't know if they can continue to keep this up. But to me, the biggest caveat is going to be whether the LA Kings can score on, on the Edmonton Oilers, which I think they can because Skinner isn't a world beater. Pick, uh, Pickard is, Calvin Pickard is playing very well, surprisingly, especially for his older age. Um, but you gotta get you gotta make sure you continue the production from like Kempe 28, 28 goals, Fiala 29, Kopitar 26, Trevor Moore playing phenomenal with 31 goals. That's that's great for Trevor Moore. I'm very impressed with that. Uh, I only know that he's uh, uh LA King because the Steve Dangle podcast talks about him so much. So, and Quinn Biofield again, I'm happy they started to see more production and everything. And if we go over the lines of the uh, Los Angeles Kings. Uh, you can see, let's go up to here. So you have Lafreniere, uh, who's playing more of a defensive role. Kopitar, Kempe, that's phenomenal. I love that. Fiala's playing on the third line. This is wrong. Fiala should be up higher. I think they, these guys, these, they have these swaps, daily face off as they swap. So, and then you have Trevor Moore as well. Um, Deneau and Ar- Arvidsson, who's also playing extremely well as well. Trevor Lewis, Lazat, Fiala, and then Pierre Luc Dubois and Byfield playing on those bottom lines. I think they're going to be – there's a lot of swapping you can do here because you can use Philip Deneau as, as your shutdown guy. Pierre Luc Dubois can play on the second power play. Um, Trevor Lewis as well. I mean, there's a lot of good dynamic players here, good solid players here. And going on to the defensive pairing, you have Do- uh, Dowdy and Mikey Anderson, great defensive defenseman in Mikey Anderson. Gavrikov, who played phenomenal last year in the playoffs, uh, which got him the contract with L.A., who he was traded to from Columbus. Matt, Matt Roy as well, playing great. Anglin and Jordan Spence, again, breaking out this year with 71 in 71 games, 23 points. Um, but again, I I don't know. There's a lot of good pieces here. There's not great pieces the issue. The only great that I saw really there, you saw Fiala and Kempe playing well. Dowdy's playing well as well for a defenseman. But in the goal setting, surprisingly phenomenal. But I just don't know if they have the, the ability to get the production to be able to put enough goals on uh, Stuart Skinner. Because we know that the McDavid, Dreisaitl have the ability to just turn it on and put in a ton of goals. 
And I think you're going to see this being a battle of the goalies because you're just trying to – I mean, if you saw the uh, – you saw the Hellebuck uh, versus Georgia battle that happened in game one today, that was a 7-6 to six game, which is crazy. I think you're going to see a lot of high-scoring games. And mind you, this is the third time that a team like this has – or these two, three, these two teams have played each other in the playoffs. This is the third season in a row. So you're definitely going to be a, 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 definitely a little bit of a grind, a lot of animosity toward each other. So we'll be able to see if they're going to end up really battling it out and see what that looks like. So moving over to Edmonton, um, you get plenty of goals over here, right? I mean, we're seeing Zach Hyman with 54. I think he was second in the league. Maybe it was either him or it was um, Reinhardt uh, because him and – you know, make, not big David – Matthews, so he was third. So he was third probably behind Reinhardt and um, Austin Matthews, of course. So, uh, But you, moving on to the uh, phenomenal players that they have, they have, uh, I mean, McDavid, of course, 32 goals, 100 assists, only the fourth player to do it, and, and Nikita Kucherov being the fifth player to do it in history. Um, Dreisaitl putting up 106 points still, 41 goals, looking phenomenal. Zach Hyman, 54, 54, 54 goals. Evan Bouchard over a point per game as a defenseman, looking great. I mean, definitely going to have some Norris consideration there as well. Uh, New Hopkins playing great in the second line, or er, playing uh, up there with McDavid, 67 points. Ekholm, I mean, come on, what a great trade for Ekholm, by the way. Uh, 45 points for a defenseman. Kane has some injury issues right now, 44 points, 77 games. And Fogel surprisingly put up a consi- uh, over a half point per game. Uh, that's impressive for me. I did not expect that from Warren Fogel, I'll be honest. So... Moving over to the goaltending, though, this is where I get a little more nervous. Again, they're playing average goaltending right here, right? You're getting good. You're getting average, good goaltending. The bulk of majority of the games being played by Stuart Skinner. Fifty nine games played, thirty six wins, the point nine five oh point nine oh five save percentage, which is around the average, slightly above average, but still around average. Two point six two goals against per game, which is good. I mean, mind you, we're seeing teams like Edmonton put it up like four, five, six goals. We saw a ton of that. In the last couple of years and throughout the season as well. So as long as they can continue to stick around that two and a half goals uh, per game for Stuart Skinner or Calvin Picker, depends deciding they want to go that route. He also has great numbers too, 2.45 goals against average with a 0.909 save percentage. That's great. I love that. Jack Campbell, unfortunately unusable, still in the AHL uh, with that big contract. I'm curious whether they buy that out. I don't know if they're going to be able to. They're going to try and be able to move on from him, but. We will see. It's definitely like it would definitely cost probably a first round pick to move off them, by the way, uh, for that many years. So, but again, I think those are your two options. I mean, what's I mean, what else is there? I mean, you have Skinner, Pickard. I mean, I again, you're just hoping that McDavid and Hyman can just put out a, a ton of goals. I mean, they're and they're going to be able to because looking at these lines, you have trading for Henrik. I mean, well, how did Henrik do over over here? Let's see. Go to Henrik. Nine goal or nine points, twenty-two games. Okay, not too bad. He's getting, getting, uh, getting there. Uh, playing on the top line will definitely help, especially with Hyman and McDavid. Nuge Hopkins, dry side, Fogel working out really well. Dylan Holloway coming out of his own. Sam Carrick. By the way, this is supposed to be uh, Ryan McLeod. Uh, Daily Faceoff screwed this up. It should be Ryan McLeod and Corey Perry again. Evander King, yeah, Matias Yanmark. Actually, I went over to Cap Friendly and said so we can have a line instead. Similar lineup, by the way, Henrik, McDavid, Hyman, Drysaddle, um, Drysaddle, Hopkins, Nugent Hopkins, and Fogel, Holloway, McLeod, and Perry, then Derek Ryan, uh, Sam Carrick, and Connor Brown. Um, again, I don't think they play. They don't want to play Connor Brown too much. This fourth line is not really producing a ton. Dylan Holloway, only 38 games played, 9 points. Um, and again, going out to the defense defenseman, Bouchard, at home playing phenomenal. I'm very impressed with that, by the way. Darnell Nurse, Cody Cece, Kulak, and DeHarnay. DeHarnay is definitely going to give you that a little more of a grit um, because he's definitely going to bump some guys a couple times. So I'm really curious on who, how this is going to pan out. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are because I'm I'm curious. I Now, going over here, I'll tell you my pick in three, two. Actually, one second. Please leave a, an emoji down below. Uh, pick your favorite emoji. I don't care which one. Help small creators like me uh, when you comment. So it help, help me with the engagement. But I will tell you my pick now. Uh, I do have Edmonton taking this. I think I have him in six, I believe. Um, I just don't, I don't know if I see Los Angeles being good enough to take down. Again, putting up enough points to get past McDavid and make it back past uh, dry settle. They're going to play phenomenal. They're going to put up a ton of goals. I think that's what's really going to screw uh, Los Angeles. They just can't produce like 
Edmonton Oilers can. And even if Skinner or, or Pickard lets it four goals, you know, the Oilers will probably score five. It's just the nature of the beast and the way they play. It's just the dynamic offensive players that they are. I just, I mean, McDavid's going to be up for heart trophy um, consideration. Probably going to be Kucherov winning it, but let me know what your thoughts are, by the way. Uh, I want to I know what your thoughts are because I'm, I'm curious. I It could be, a, again, it could be that Los Angeles works out this way, but I think it still goes to six. I think that, that just makes the most sense. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like, subscribe, and uh, catch you soon. Love you.